Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Some Low Grade Gamers podcast. Here we are on week 11. Yay, isn't that nice? We passed our 10th anniversary and we're still here. League's 11. Nice. <laughs> so, as usual, Some Low Grade Gamers consists of myself and the other half of Some Kind of Gaming, Laura. Hi. Laura, how are you this week? I'm good. How are you, more importantly? Oh, uh, no, just as important. We're all equally important here, <laughs> I believe. And some low-grade gaming is also the low-grade gamer himself. Mr. Dan, how are you this week? You are equally not, important as well. Not bad, not bad. Uh, how, how are you, Tom? I am very well, thank you for asking. This is nice, really feeling the love this week. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, you guys have really taken my criticisms on board and... I don't think we've missed a week of not asking you yet. Yeah, welcome me into the asking of how the week's been. It's been nice. Good, good. (laughs) Don't need to get anything off your chest. Oh, yeah, you should. Anything? (laughs) No, I mean, Laura's been a little bit abusive this week, but I don't think that's uh... (laughs) that. Well, I did win that knuckles session. I'm sleeping on the couch tonight, everybody. Mm, (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Anyways, we're going to do things a little bit differently this week because the asking of what we've been playing is actually our main topic of the week. So we're just going to, I'm going to ask Dan and Laura what they've been playing a little bit later on because it is very interesting. Make sure you stick around for it. But we're just going to start off on a little bit of a a smaller topic. Continuing on from the NFT conversation, I believe we had in episode nine, maybe it was. Anyway, yeah, a few episodes ago. Uh, Dan, are you a fan of Ubisoft at all? A little bit. A little bit? Just just a wee bit? Oh, I'm, I'm a bit worried. A bit worried about yeah. the uh, where the conversation's going. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Dis- disappointed. Yeah, whenever I ask you if you like something, it's like, oh, should I? <laughs> it's like I did. I did really <laughs> like it. So, <laughs> yeah, NFTs. Then I mentioned Ubisoft. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good, is it? So Ubisoft has their own thing. Ubisoft Courts. We talked about that. It's the whole like NFT. Uh, realm company thing i i don't really know to be yeah. honest it's ubisoft court it's like where they sell their nfts or the business have set up to sell nfts i don't, I don't, I don't really I don't nft pretend. store i don't really pretend to understand but what ubisoft has said to all of its consumers basically that you're all stupid and you don't understand Dan, I'm sorry, but you just don't get it. NFTs are good and you don't understand their value and their worth. You know, I'm thinking about this and I I agree. We don't... I mean, I'm (laughs) stupid. Yeah. Think about it, (laughs) right? Let's think about NFTs. As a company, if I sell NFTs... I make a lot of money for a JPEG and you lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So it's just win win. Or win win. (laughs) Yeah, what what we don't understand is they're big, greedy corporations (laughs) who want to make money. I think we understand perfectly well. Yeah, I think we don't understand the business perspective, but we understand it from. The customer's perspective. Yes. But that's not the perspective that they want us to have. Well, Dan is probably the best one to comment on that because he is both a consumer and lover of video games. And while he's not a developer or a publisher or a big big time company, he's he's still in the industry and makes money off said industry through games. So yeah, what what do you think about this? Is is it just greedy corporate? Bulldust, or <laughs> is it? I was very careful with my word choice. Nice, there. I yeah, like that. Yeah, bulldust. Yeah, yeah bulldust. Yeah, good nice. o- Aussie one for you there, Laurie. I mean, the Kiwi. Didn't, you didn't just make it up. No, nah, it's a ancient 
and Aussie I, slang. I, an I, ancient Australian proverb. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Bulldust. <laughs> or is it totally fair and we, like Laura and I, the fully fledged consumers just don't understand? Look, I think that's a loaded question, but to be blunt and simple, I wholeheartedly disagree with NFTs from the point of view that I just don't think people have money to throw away. And, mm-hmm. or, you know, give the money to charity. Like, how much is that NFT costing the company? Like, if Ubisoft came out as an example, or any other company, let's use EA. Everybody hates EA. If EA oh, came yeah. out and said, we're going to give you a picture of this soccer ball that we may or may not distribute later. But 80% of the money goes to charity. Yes. Not against that at all. Yeah. It's Fantastic. A bit better. That's a great idea. Absolutely. Then cool. If you can oh. make money for charity, do it. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't. I don't see the cost. At, at the end of the day, you, you you know when a game, as an example, is produced and you purchase that game, whether you purchase it physically or digitally, either way, you see the amount of effort that has gone into that game, making that game and doing, you know, all of that sort of stuff. NFTs, like mini screenshots, or snippets Mm -hmm. and it's not like you've got the rights to reuse those products or do what you want so as a consumer so i just don't i just don't get it i don't get it as a business owner i have no interest in nfts or even doing something. I mean, at the end of the day, iDigital I Games uh, is fully dedicated to trying to bring the prices of, of games down and getting them out to the masses as quickly as, as efficiently and as cheap as we can afford to do so. That's... That's it. That's the that's the whole idea and the whole premise. If you're making a video game, you are so immersed in this world. Who's making the decisions? Does that make sense? Because yeah. no. I don't see a developer who has spent hundreds, thousands of hours, whatever it is, on a video game and then go on, you know what? I'm gonna get a screenshot of this and show the big boss and we're gonna sell it for thousands. What was that Castlevania Mm -hmm. JPEG go for? It was expensive. Over a hundred thousand, wasn't it? I chose to block that from my mind. I think it was over, it was was definitely over a hundred thousand, but I don't remember how much over. Seriously, like I mean, if if they'd come out and oh, said, "Look, fifty or sixty thousand dollars of that is going to charity," right? Now that's still a huge yeah, chunk. That that's isn't. Fine with but it, even if fifty percent of that was going to charity, that would be awesome. Good charities, mm-hmm. by yeah. the way, as well. Not don't just go to a charity that pays X, Y, and Z to all these other bullshit things. Bulldust. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, you ruined it. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Um, right. Yeah, so that's that's just my take on it. I just I disagree with NFTs. And, yes, I don't think the consumer understands it at all because it doesn't make any sense. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so that statement is it. somewhat correct then, isn't it? Yeah, the customer doesn't yeah. understand because it makes sense. They just skipped yeah. the last part of the mm-hmm. sentence. 
What yeah, is, I'm yeah. most worried about this whole conversation, this whole I don't know, state of the industry right now, I guess you could call it, is that we had a very similar situation go on when microtransactions first came to light or were first put forward to be in video games. And people reacted in a similar way to us right now. No, nobody wanted to pay extra money for extra things. Mm. But look at it, look at it now. Like it is just commonplace. People accept it. People do it quite often. I started playing a new free-to-play game uh, this week. Uh, it's a new new Yu-Gi-Oh game, Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel, probably quite niche. But I was more of the story, I was level one, you know, cool, finished the tutorial, went into it, went to Versa Player, and you get you basically get a choice of like three pretty crappy decks. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna verse someone with one of these crappy decks. No, I didn't. I versed somebody who had built a super intense dark magician deck, if that means anybody, anything to anybody. And uh, so basically what this guy had done is he'd gone and finished the tutorial. He'd spent a bunch of money on the game straight up out of the bat when he's at level zero still. And then his first duel was also against me who had chosen to not spend a bunch of money. And as a result, I, I lost quite, quite miserably. And I haven't actually won a game yet because I keep encountering people who have poured money into it. Mm-hmm. Have just have better cards because they have more money to spend. Yeah, is, yeah, that's always a shame. Is that the way NFTs are going to end up? Well, it's like with the microtransactions, especially with that game. I feel like you download a game that's free, mm. you really enjoy playing it, and so then some people are like, oh, they don't have a problem with spending like maybe. $80 or whatever it would have cost them to buy the game if it wasn't free and use that to like get a deck so that they can play that game or whatever. But at least with a microtransaction and then they can have like a really good time playing that game. But what does an NFT give you? It doesn't even give you an experience. So I guess the thinking is maybe eventually an NFT will be there's let's just use this Yu-Gi-Oh game as an example. There'll be one specific card that only one person will be able to have. Mm. And then they will have that real strong card. One of a kind yeah. card. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I think, I think that's definitely a possibility, a very high possibility. I think I have no issue with microtransactions and I never did. Okay, Depending. I feel like you're one of the f- there. Go on, please. The, the reason I didn't is, okay, if I pay 110 bucks for a game and yep. there's microtransactions in that game, that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, I paid $110 for that game. If I am playing, say, Destiny 2, Warzone, Fortnite, Apex Legends, huge yep. game, Free to play all free to play, especially the ones where they've got an expansive amount of lore behind them and and, and all those other bits and pieces. I mean, Warzone's Warzone. You shoot people, that's it. There's no lore behind that. But I was going to say, you're not including Warzone in that. No, I was was thinking of Destiny 2. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. If those games have a free-to-play aspect, they got to make their money back somewhere. So I've got no issue with microtransactions with a full game. Like Apex Legends, Fortnite, Destiny 2. I mean, Destiny 2's got a couple of issues with paywalls and that sort of thing. But for the free-to-play section, it is so robust and so good that I think microtransactions are needed. If you're if you're paying, uh, the, the season pass for Destiny Two is like six months long. So if you pay ten no. bucks for six months, that's that's nothing. Even, even if you play that game for two years, 
it's you still haven't spent the amount of money that you would have spent purchasing a, a full game, if that makes sense. Destiny 2 is a little bit different yeah. uh, because you can buy expansions and DLC packs and all those sorts of things, which okay. is, is uh, oh. good and bad. Do, so Destiny, do these expansions and, stuff and DLC packs, do they contain... Uh, I guess I guess I'll call it like pay to win items. Do you know what I do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, not not really, not really. Okay, They're, that's it's it's more expanding the story, so you can go to a okay. whole new world and you can do this and you can do that and blah blah blah. So the, the DLCs are oh. quite good uh, for for Destiny Two, and even I think I think the battle passes across the board, even on Warzone. Halo Infinite, as an example, I think the battle passes are, are fair enough. Yep. I think that no, amount no, of look, money. I... Go on. Uh, yeah, well, I just wanted to say that I agree with what you've said. I, mm -hmm. I think a free game is, you know, that it's just fair. You know, again, they have to make money somehow. We all know that games like Fortnite and, and Destiny 2 make a lot of money. Sometimes if you are really having a good time in a free game, you don't have an issue doing microtransactions because you want to thank the developers in some way. You almost and owe it you. to them, don't you? Yeah. Mm. Yep. No, I totally would that. I felt that way with several games. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's just like buying DLC or buying a a game uh, digitally and then going and buying it physically or if you're a big YouTuber like we are not, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting a free game for review and then going and buying it to support the developers. They all fall under the same category. I just think that I don't like it when it becomes pay to win. You know what I mean? So if you are in, I don't know, if, if you have to pay for a sniper rifle in Warzone, and you, you know, sniper rifle costs you twenty dollars, and you then the only sniper on your team. Then when you know Jimmy from down the road, who's seven years old, and his mum is you know single mum, can't afford to splurge out on this one sniper rifle. What do you mean, Jimmy? I already got you a a play box thing. You know why do you need why do you need twenty more bucks? Like that's when it be, that's when I have a little bit of a problem with it. But if that person with the sniper rifle has instead just bought a, a Batman outfit, then, you know, be Batman. That's cool. Yeah, it's cool when it's just skins or something that isn't actually affecting your ability in the game. Like with buying a really good deck, for example, and then you don't stand a chance against those people if you haven't bought one. But if, I don't know, the cards had like a cool background. Yeah. Exactly. But then the people that are making the game know that less people are going to pay for it if it's not paid when. So yeah, just, it's a, just it a quick one. Uh, Laura said deck then. Her accent uh, may have yeah. confused some that are listening to the podcast. Uh, she was not talking about yeah, so Tom's nice. junk. We, we actually had a friend who had recently built a new deck on the back of his house and he asked Laura to record a voice message to invite all of his friends to his new deck party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got his phone out. He's like, say it, say it. Just because it's... Uh, that was his invitation. It's quite hilarious. They're going, party on Laura's <laughs> deck. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> Oh god. That was pretty funny though. I never went to the party. I don't know if it ever went ahead. He just used me for the invitation and I didn't even go. Didn't even get invited. Oh, didn't even get oh, invited myself. What a wanker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? I I think he did invite me. I just didn't go. Yeah. He's he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, cosmetics and stuff. I I oh, also I don't have an issue with play to win with one one thing that is a must mm. is yes. matchmaking needs to be appropriate. So yes. Yes. 
That if, is if you, so like that would just make all the difference in Tom's experience. Yeah. With that well, game. the thing is, yep, Tom could get totally turned off playing it and spending any money at all. Me losing yeah. a bunch is, of times because I have to pay money turns me off. I don't want to do that shit. Bull I dust. agree. Absolutely. No, yeah, 100%. Uh, bull dust. I, I, I have no interest in that. But if I, say, for example, wanted to verse different people or do something different, then, you know, and I paid $60 and got an awesome dip. And with that deck, <laughs> I made myself laugh. Oh, you did that, say you crack yourself up, don't you? Uh, so that that sixty bucks, as an example, that like that's not fair to versus somebody who's hasn't paid, and that's no fun for me either. Like yes. it's it's no fun stomping on people that you know you're going to stomp on. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's not fun. That's not why I play games. Yes. I, I, unfortunately, I think there's a small percentage of people that would disagree with you. Mm, I think that there's some sickos that love that. Like, enjoy oh. crushing noobs. <laughs> you know? Then, those guys. crush the fake gamers. <laughs> Noob Master 69. <laughs> those, those people have issues and potentially need to oh. see somebody about those issues. Yep. Please call. Instead of paying for microtransactions, they should be paying for some therapy. <laughs> yes. Yes, you have, you have problems. If you, if you need to beat up little children uh, while playing a game, that's that's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Go see someone. <laughs> Beating up Pokemon, though. Oh, nice segue. <laughs> I love it. I don't know how good it was, but yeah, it, was it, was fun. Right. it was all right. That was good. That was good. And do you know what? That completely <laughs> ties in with a thought I was having the other night. I was yeah. sitting there okay, okay. and I was on top of a rock. This is in Pokemon, by the way. I don't just stand on rocks. I was going to say, is this real life? You're just sitting on no. rocks? No, no, no. This is in... in in Arceus. Do you need therapy too, Dan? No, I'm good. Sitting We've sat on rocks. Sitting on rocks doesn't just doesn't count. What about that time we <laughs> sat on that Chinese rock? Oh yeah, that was a nice rock. Don't swim to China from Vietnam and sit on a Chinese rock. Just just a warning for everyone out there. You might might get shot. Yes. We didn't, but get shot. There is a that risk is. of of it. Yes. Anyways, Dan was sitting on a lovely rock. We digress. Pokemon Legends Arceus is what we're talking about. For those of you living under said rock, it's been been released this week and, uh, yeah, it's all we've been playing. So, Dan, sorry, back to you. Tell us about your rock. Yes, my bad. I apologise. So I was standing on this rock and I was thinking, (laughs) if this was real life, wouldn't this be abuse for animals? Mm. That's oh. always been a thought that I've had in the back of my mind. I was literally just talking about this on stream today. Mm-hmm. Have you noticed how in Legends Arceus, Game Freak is constantly trying to justify their catching and using of Pokemon? So I, I just recently completed this bit and this lady is quite upset because I am abusing Pokemon and she herself could never get into a Pokemon battle because that's just, that's a bit too far. And she's like accusing me. She's like, you're keeping them in these little Pokeball things. I was like, yeah. So what she's trying to say is they're caged animals who have no choice but to fight for me. That stuff is illegal in real life. She's right. You know what? Like fighting rings? Chicken fighting rings. Yeah, that's essentially just two yeah. tall chicks going at it. Yep. It and is. not in the fun but way. But then they try and get around it. But like, yeah, not in a fun way. Yes. Fun. Like with the luxury balls. Um, and they're like kind of insinuating that there's like a nice comfy lounge in there. Like the Pokemon, they're having a great time. But in reality, <laughs> 
how often do they get loud, let out of that Pokeball? I remember one time I was really young playing Pokemon and you know how you always have heaps of Pokemon in your computer? Yeah, storage. I released all of the Pokemon that I didn't have in my party because I felt bad yeah. because they were in there and I never played with them. So I released all of them. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I, it, it, yeah. <laughs> I but did. I felt terrible. Show, I wouldn't do that now because I've become callous. Like, like go to the Professor Oak's farm. Yeah. I, I feel like Legends Arceus is a little bit more akin to that. There's that little, like, pen. field pen. Pastures. I mean, granted, it, the pastures yeah, is what they call yeah. it. Pastures. I mean, they're quite small. There's, there's not a whole lot there. Uh, no. I haven't caught any fish Pokemon yet, but. Is there a pond? There. Is there a pond in said past? I don't, I don't. I don't remember there being a pond. I don't think there is either. Do they just like so float like, in the air? I've got like a hundred and something Pokemon already. But there's no room. Oh, lovely. Where, where are they gone? They're, it's not Can like they're all in there. All of them? Nah, it just shows no. like ten. Oh. Yeah. So maybe the rest of. So, are... I don't know. They're yeah. still on their Pokeballs, I would say. There's just a box out the back that they just put them all on this chest. These Pokeballs yeah. are made out of acorns or apricorns and rocks. <laughs> There's no lounges in these Pokeballs. <laughs> no, dude. There, there is a line somewhere at, towards the start where the professor says something along the lines of, oh, don't worry, they get sh shrunk down and it's really comfortable for them or something. I can't remember yes, the exact they... line, but I, I, yeah, I was sitting there going, where are we going with this? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's technically free range. I remember thinking, like, you try, like, this is, this game is set in, like, the old world, uh, which we'll get into in a second, but you're trying to tell me that you guys have the technology to, like, shrink down Pokemon not like kill them because I feel like that would happen and then like is he Ant-Man or something like what is going on how many Pokemon did he kill to get one in that badam bowl exactly yeah. the experiment Pokemon that no one talks about oh the experiment hundreds of Pokemon more like it <laughs> I think yeah, well, I think it's like a movie when you go it. out in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no wonder it's not safe to walk through the tall grass. Uh, these humans just we'll mess see you up. miniature Pokemon everywhere. Miniature it's mutant Pokemon Chewy like never came back. <laughs> yeah, no wonder what what's your rival's name? No, they don't their Pikachu doesn't like them. He's just a Ikari. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just a shrunk down version of himself at all times. <laughs> no wonder he's upset. Yeah. It's uh interesting. And I but I do like the fact that they've uh they've at least acknowledged it in this game, you know. Mm. It's, it's something at least. It is something. And it's pretty cool how it's just like so totally different to any other Pokemon game. I think that's the big elephant in the room here mm -hmm. is so I was a bit worried because I mean, it sounded amazing. Uh, I, I, I have a little bit of faith in the Pokemon company and Game Freak, you know, like I, 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 love, I like Pokemon. I'm, I'm a big fan, but they don't like to do things differently and they're, and they're pretty stuck in their ways. So I was a little bit, how is this going to turn out? I think it might be the best Pokemon game of all time. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Dan? So what I think we should do first is maybe go into likes and then dislikes. Because okay. Okay. I'm, yeah. I, I yeah. may potentially... Yeah, because I think I'm going to come off negative when I'm not intending oh. to be. <laughs> okay, there is a couple of... There is a couple of downsides to it. Um, okay, so... 
All right, if we're going to do all these likes and dislikes, let's let's discuss story first. Uh, Laura and I aren't huge the way through it. Uh, we are playing it on Twitch. If you'd like to come join us on Twitch, we will be playing it at least once, maybe twice a week on there uh, until we finish the But so far, it is a little bit more adult. It is a little bit deeper if you will it's not just like hey here's here's a starter pokemon you're gonna go be the champion or you know set off on an adventure for no rhyme or reason you know there's there's something there's a bit of mystery right Mm -hmm. damn what do you think i I mean i know it's not groundbreaking i have an issue with the start and how you came to be Mm-hmm. I just, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to go into any spoilers or anything like that for anybody that. Well, yeah, uh, that's important. Yeah, please don't. Yeah, that, that hasn't uh, even started the game yet. But the way your character is introduced is, is just, I don't, I, I don't like it. It's just weird. And it's all they talk about. Every time you talk to somebody, that's what they talk about. That's the first thing, especially that wanker with the mustache. I hate him. Oh, the green mustache? No, the commander. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he orders me around. I don't appreciate that. Tom doesn't yeah, like authority. I have a big problem with it. Yeah, I just okay. don't like I, I don't I, like him. I enjoyed that aspect of it. Um yeah, I thought it was, it's just different and okay, it is It is quite weird and it's strange, but it is different for Pokemon, you know? Again, I'm just comparing this to other Pokemon games. Uh, so I like it how it's not just like you, know, you wake up in your bed at your mum's house, in your room, uh, and then you go see the Pokemon professor, you know? Like there is a little bit of mystery about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that you have some modern day items or one modern day item in this like older world just adds to that kind of mystery, you know? And I, I don't know. I think it's just a, I understand where you're coming from, where it annoys you and people do, it is overused a bit. It's like, Hey, you're that kid. And you're like, yes, yes, I'm, I'm that kid, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I just, yeah, I, I liked it. I liked it. I, I, I personally thought, I thought it was, it was a bit random. Yeah, no, I don't. Yes. Unexplained. But I guess it, that's the thing. Like, maybe it's going to be explained at the end. That is See, my... If it's, it's, sorry. That, that, that is a potential with something that does happen during the story. But if they haven't fleshed out... Like, I haven't got to that point yet. I am towards the end. So I'm hoping they do flesh out that section a little bit more and then it won't bother me as much. But mm-hmm. it's just all anybody talks about. So I get a, get a new line, mate. You know, like, <laughs> sh- shut up. You said that 10 You're minutes lying. ago, mate. I'm like, <laughs> that guy with the moustache just pisses me off. I just don't like him. I am not okay. Here's a is another point. Character design, is it his character or his mannerisms or what is the? Oh, I like just his attitude. Know. It's just his attitude. He's a dickhead. Yeah, no, he is. <laughs> you tell this is an Australian podcast, isn't it? That that dickhead's full of bulldust. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dusty fella. Yeah, he is. Yeah. yeah, no, look, I agree. Uh, I don't like. The Pokemon Professor, uh, Laventon. What the heck is with that weird little hat? I mean, no offence if you've got a hat like that, anybody in the audience listening, but it's, it's a weird hat. Isn't it like a helmet? It's it like goes a like under his chin. Yeah, it's like a bonnet. It's, um, yeah, we don't. We decided we didn't like him. All of our, our chat, our Twitch community decided nobody that. Nobody likes him. No, nah, nobody likes him. He's, he's a strange man with a weird hat and... <laughs> Uh, I just, yeah, 
he's he's not he's not my favorite professor. Yeah. As far as personality goes, he's always there, but he doesn't have like a lot. Like he doesn't add a lot, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's I okay. Think one issue that I have with the Pokemon series, which a lot of people pointed out in Sword and Shield, is there is just no talking whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And I, I agree. think I think that really brings it to life a little bit more is having that voice. Of but do you mean specifically voice acting or? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cause because there's minimal like chat interactions as well. Yeah. I mean, what, whatever it is, the problem, the problem I, I've always had with the Pokemon series and more once Sword and Shield came out is like at the start of, uh, start of Sword and Shield. Uh, what's his name? Rose? Or, I think that's his name. I can't remember the, the main guy. Oh, yeah, President Rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's doing that big speech in front of the whole stadium. And mm-hmm. it's just like, next, next, yeah. next. I don't, yeah. I, don't, no, I, don't, no. I don't care what he's got to say. Whereas if he was actually talking and using words, I think it'd be much more engaging and interactive. Well, wow, yeah. Dan, you should have come to our stream, our opening stream of Arceus. Laura and I did all the voice acting. Yeah, man, it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we voice acted all of it. So um, the guy that that you don't like, the big grumpy guy with the mustache, He's got a little voice like this, and this is how he talks. He talks like he's like, Wait, I order you to go do this. And then the captain, Tom, thought that the captain was a dude originally. Yeah. So he, he made his voice like this. And then he later realized that <laughs> it was a lady captain. It was so funny. But, but she's still got a voice like this. Yeah. And they're all English for some reason. So Professor Laverton sounds a little bit like this, you know. That's, 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 voice, that's yeah. how we imagine him in our head. <laughs> that's how, that's how I mean, he talks. Yeah, why not? Yeah. I think um, we should have been hired. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Look at the role play. That'd be great for stream for somebody who sits yeah. there yeah, and plays but we the agree it was lacking. Yeah, it was lacking voice acting to the point that we had to do it. Yes, exactly. I do now hear it in my head every time I read what Professor Leventon says now, though. <laughs> so it's, it's done its job. I mean, it's, it's stuck. Uh, if, you, if any of you guys out there have a problem, just try, try, try a bit of role mm. play with yourself or, I know, get your mum. Mum, read this out in a funny voice. Mum, will you role play with me? Yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Laura's oh, on with again. No. Laura, this stream is PG, dude. My lordy lord. Anyways. More pros, more pros. Setting. Setting. What do we think of the land of Hesui? Pretty cool. I think they've done a pretty good Open job. Areas. Yep. yep. I agree. There's a couple I of... Just... Uh... Hmm? There's a couple of glitchy things that happen. Uh, we're going into graphics, are we? Yeah, okay. Uh, yep, yep. Yep, let's go well, there. talking about the setting, I kind of was thinking about the yeah. setting. No, yeah. it. yeah, I agree with Laura. That is arguably Some... its biggest downfall. Yeah. I yeah, was so going to... The... Sorry, go on, please. So sometimes the Pokemon are doing the robot dance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The assets are constantly loading in and out as well. I don't know if you've known the mountains change shape constantly behind you. Yeah, and sometimes Pokemon disappear right in front of you. Yep. Mm. Uh, I um, was going into the main building, like your, I can't remember what they call it, the big wherever the captain lives and resides and stuff. And Galaxy there is Tower? just the, is that what it is? yeah, some, yeah, Galaxy Headquarters, whatever it is. And there's just this huge black line across the screen. Like it, 
it, it was weird. Just didn't make any and it was like sense. Strobing. Yeah. Uh, make sure you check out our YouTube video, which will be out later this week to have a visual to what we're talking about here. But it was like, like it's something that should not be happening in a Pokemon game. Mm-hmm. You know, like they 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 it's have really the, not a first party game. No, they have the ask. They're like, make sure that type of stuff just doesn't happen. But uh, yeah, it, look, I I get that the switch is limited, right? Like as far as hardware goes, so it's not like Pokemon's an overly demanding game. I think for me, for me, I haven't really had too many issues. So okay, you know, there's the odd, there's the odd Pokemon glitching, and it's just like, eh, okay, whatever. That one's just dancing around in the background or it's doing something weird. But overall, I haven't had anything game breaking at all yeah so that's good for me yeah i mean look people keep calling it open world and Mm. no it's it's definitely not not open Open area Mm. open area yes it's certainly not open. yeah like that it's definitely not linear as you know, like it's not like the old Pokemon games where it's like route one, route two, it's pretty straightforward and you know, there's not much to see and do. Yeah, but it, it's got like really large, open, vast, explorable spaces, but it's not mm. open world. Yes. Yeah. No, and that's okay. Yeah. It look, would be cool if it, it was, though. It is, but I think that should have been possibly the expectation should have been set a lot earlier as to yes that it would that it's not open world yeah because a lot of people ex- sort of expected that and weren't given that i i feel like they've mm-hmm. stolen stuff from ocarina of time and from dragon okay. ball fighter z if, yeah. what, what do you mean by stolen stuff? So I did an Instagram post recently of mm-hmm. the beginning of Pokemon Legends. And it the wording and everything, the way it looks, reminded me of Ocarina of Time to a T. I just thought Deku, okay. Deku tree, blah, blah, blah. Every single oh, yeah. evolution, I guarantee you, if you have a look at the evolutions and you have a look at Dragon Ball mm-hmm. Fighter Z, you will see exactly what I mean. Every time somebody powers up in Dragon Ball Fighter Z, it basically looks like Pokemon's evolving. I'll put up a comparison video. I'll show you. With the... Because the Pokemon Evolve, it's got that like dark mist. They're like a silhouette. They've got red eyes and stuff. I I think it's Fighter Z that I've played. I think it is. Don't they just go like like most Dragon Ball characters? Yeah, but it's like all the uh, animation that goes on around it. Mm. Uh, okay. Yep. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. yeah I mean, so I don't think there's anything. It's inherently wrong about like no, just not not super... like rip off, but sharing isn't always caring. Yeah. <laughs> so I just what didn't about feel it was original Wild enough. Breath? Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah. No, no. Fair enough. Yeah. What about the Breath of the Wild comparison? So that classic over-the-shoulder shot. Uh, you, know, you could the, say that about everything, though, now, can't you? Relaxing piano keys, you know, no, all no. that. Pokemon, the, this game is nothing like Breath of the Wild whatsoever. I don't think you can compare the two. No, yeah. no I don't I agree. Just the marketing made it seem that way a bit, I feel. Yeah. Mm. Uh, look, I think overall, like, I'll stop being negative at this point. I think overall it's an no, enjoyable it's- game. The uh, crafting and other bits and pieces is a very cool aspect to it. 
<laughs> making money by completing your poker decks. Again, I think that's a cool aspect to it as well. Mm -hmm. I am not so fond of how many Pokemon you have to catch. That's my last negative point. I, I dislike having to catch a million of each Pokemon. I've got no interest in catching 50 Psyducks. I uh, know, yeah. So, and There's then they're having Psyducks. to see them do specific moves as well. Yeah. Like, uh, you're going to have to fight him in, in the hope that he happens to use Water Pulse this time. Yeah. Yeah. And so, the most annoying thing uh, is half the side missions require you to complete the Pokedex entries for certain Pokemon. And they're not completed until you do all of that. Like, ah, oh, my God. And then it's like, oh, you've completed it. But what about the evolution? It's like, oh, bugger off. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What like, more do you want? Go catch your own Pokemon. Yeah, but you treat yourself. Little shit. <laughs> <laughs> You've got Pokeballs and stuff now. I, I, I do very much like that um, with that old world theme and like the setting of it being very new and how mm. all, like, again, these Pokeballs are made of apricorns and stones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there's no tech. It's very much, uh, I tried to actually look up the period in Japanese history that it was based on. And there is nothing that I can specifically find uh, on on Google, at least in, in, in my searches. Um, if, if anybody would like to give it a go and, and let me know, if anyone more familiar with Japanese culture, I, I would love to know. But um, it's definitely based in like, you know, old world Japan with colonizers. I thought that was a little, a little bit cheeky, a bit interesting how the, the galaxy core and all the cores are they're colonizers like it straight up says that Laventon is from a faraway region which is by the way half the reason he's got british accent you know because he's a colonizer from a faraway region <laughs> and uh we all know that the the british that, that they they enjoyed a bit of colonization back oh, in the day they loved it. I loved it yep you know where uh, Dan and I are Australian and Laura is a Kiwi, so we can confirm we're all of somewhat British descent. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I thought, uh, yeah, it's just, is that, it's a bit more of an adult theme, you know. It's hard to find and you've got to look for it, but it is, it's definitely there. And I feel like that was a really smart play on Game Freak's behalf because there's people like uh, us who notice it and they're like oh yeah okay yeah that's yeah, that's pretty interesting but then there's you know i'm sure dan if your daughter or, or a younger a younger person was to play it it would could just go straight over their heads and you know, that wouldn't put two seconds worth of thought into it so i thought that was done well i guess yeah, yeah i think no. that it's different an older game especially in the sense that like it's so much harder and just the way that the whole thing is structured because th it's no secret that the past pokemon games are just piss easy mm -hmm. yep. yeah there's been a couple that are especially uh, x and y i believe were criticized for their ease yeah so it's definitely the most challenging pokemon game and in that sense as well it's more mature Yes. Yeah, and they put mature themes, mm -hmm. more mature themes. One into thing it. that I am find myself wanting is mm. more Pokemon battles with people. Yeah, they definitely lackluster. I don't. Yeah, I just. Like, like trainers like or gyms in, in specific? I, I liked the gym aspect, but obviously with where this is set, that's realistically not what they were going mm -hmm. for. But it would have been nice to have a couple more trainer battles along the way or something. Like, why can't you battle more of the Pearl or Diamond clans? Yes. Nope, I agree. You know I, I think... Mean? like. 
they were going for that, like Pokemon trainers haven't been established as a thing yet. Uh, it's not yeah. a viable career career path. <laughs> which which is what they were doing, which is why I thought they would do it with the Diamond and Pearl clans more because they've been living with partner Pokemon for X amount of time and blah, 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 as opposed to the galaxy. The Diamond and Pearl clans, they're the traditional custodians of the land, that is for sure. Yes. They're the people who are being invaded, for lack of a better term. <laughs> so by the British. But I think... <laughs> it happens. It does happen. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's, that's pretty much... I, I think throwing the Pokeballs and hiding and, like, normally I don't like being sneaky. Like, I, I bores me in games. I prefer to go guns blazing. But in this game, where I thought I would want to be doing more guns blazing stuff, I actually find myself wanting to do the sneaking because, hmm. I don't know, it's, it's a little bit more entertaining. You know, you throw a berry, try and get the Pokemon to turn around so that way you can hit them in the back so then it's yep. easier to catch them, all those sorts of things. I like that you can throw a thing of mud and hit them and knock them out for a bit. That's fun. Oh, of course you like that. Is that why you open on animal abuse? Yes. But no, I, what annoyed me was, I was like, what the hell is with these spoiled apricots? Because I didn't know at first. I, I don't read any of the things. I just go next, next, next. Oh, I still so, don't know. I just, I just get rid of them. I just throw them at Pokemon. Is there a use? You guys should start reading. Nah, that's, throw them that's Pokemon. That's boring. I play a game. Yeah, you throw them at them. Game. Yeah, yeah. Knock them out. Stuns them. Oh, then you can throw a Pokemon. Okay. Yeah. No, so they're not just useless, spoiled. Why would they uh, be there if they were useless? I, I that's the that's... main key to any game is nothing is there for no reason. You know how in craft I just games, thought they were with apricots craft. that I'd gotten that I hadn't used in time. That's what I thought okay. they were. I really thought that until a Pokemon dropped one and I was like, are they just giving me like, you know, are they just like trying to take up space in my inventory? You know, like <laughs> I've crafted. Yeah, like I've just crafted <laughs> this irreusable e- e- item. Like it's just <laughs> crap, you know, like useless sludge. <laughs> Try throwing it at something. Like yeah. Yeah. Actually, that I feel like that's good advice for Pokemon Legends Arceus. When in doubt, throw right. it at a Pokemon. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the ball of mud is fantastic. Balls of mud. I Balls love, of mud. It. I love all it. of them. When, when you first encounter the big bad Pokemon who's been struck by lightning and you're deciding what to do and the professor's like trying to come up with ideas, he's like, I've got an idea. You're good at throwing things. And I was like, uh, I, I, I guess. And then he's like, why don't we just throw food at it? Let's just squish up its favorite food and throw food at it. Works like a Let's charm. Let's throw sacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah sacks of food. Throwing that's how, sacks. That's how Laura caught me. She just like sat in the bushes all sneakily. <laughs> Mushing up donuts. Yeah, then I got myself a slingshot for a yeah. more precise throw. Yeah, it just fights exactly. every now and then had to fight me. And then now now we're together. That's that's the go. And the rest is history. Yep. Mm. Anyone out there want want a girlfriend? So it's actually quite a realistic game based yeah. off of quite yeah. realistic scenarios. Yeah, kids, if you're the girl you're into isn't interested in you, just try throwing food at her. Yes, or if you are being attacked by a lion, throw some bombs. Just throw a sack. Yeah. It'll sort it out. You got any of those nice smelling salts or like relaxation candles? They work too. Lions love those. Sometimes, (laughs) I mean, you got to make sure you can jump and roll, like proper dodging. Oh, yeah. You have to throw at least, you know, 30, 40 of the things at it before it. Decides it's calm and then light leaves its body. But, um, 
you know, I'm sure a lion would like that. I mean, I'm not a professional. It's okay. You will have an infinity of these things as well, so you don't have to worry yes, about running out of them. Throw as many sacks as you want, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep on. Oh, God. I have a R-rated story. I'm going to have to tell both of you after this The stream ends. Uh, come and join Laura and I on Twitch if you'd like to know the story I'm thinking of. It's about sacks being thrown. Um, Can't wait. That. Yeah, moving <laughs> treat. off. Moving what a off treat. To a different, different topic. I just want to. I just want to bring up my favorite line in the entire game. It's when you are just starting out and you first come to the village, and it, you've just been told, like, oh, you know, you look about fifteen. Which again comes into the maturity thing. Like most of the time in Pokemon, you're a 10 year old trainer. This time you're 15, which is nice. So you're a teenager. And then it's just after that happens. And the captain, I think, in her very aggressive voice that sounds like this, she said that basically you're going to be put to work and you're going to be useful for us, or else we're going to leave you to die. Yep, very intense. She legit says, I will leave you in the wilderness to die. It's great. That is great. There's a whole bunch of kids in that village that are absolutely useless. Hey, I can't do anything. Oh, Give yeah. me five Pokeballs. Are you serious? <laughs> Why am I, giving you I was talking about him today. That's what I what said. I was like a bit greedy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what well, I said, Dan. Later on the same page. What about that creep. kid you see? When you see this kid with like a drift loon, this Pokemon, he's like, help me, I can't escape. And then it just floats away. Like it's literally a balloon. Like just walk, just, just walk back home, dude. <laughs> and then he's like, oh no, he's my friend. I really like him. I just couldn't leave. Uh, I don't know, mate. There's, there's a word. I feel dream. like that's what they call gaslight. I don't know. You've been, yeah, Stockholm Syndrome. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Sorry, kid. Yeah, you've succumbed to it. But that happens real at the start. All these things happen near the start of the game. I feel like it's just that it's that confirmation of what I wanted. Like, yes, Pokemon, like it is a more mature experience. Mm-hmm. Like it's starting to Yeah, it's just it's just more. Do you know what I'm do you guys know what I mean? I hope all yeah. you listeners know what I mean as well. There's it is just, it is I, oh yeah, it's yeah. Mature. I think in some ways it is. And then in other ways I think it slaps itself in the face. Like I I, yeah. I, I still uh, I still don't understand the way you finish a boss off is throwing sacks at them. That's, yeah, it's that's, a bit yeah. that's how you beat a boss. Yeah, okay. Like it's I, I, I get that. I, I like that I play Pokemon because I want to fight. Yeah. I, I wanna, you looked at me, that means you want to fight. Yeah, I wanna I, I wanna Pokemon. do I wanna do Pokemon battles. Well you, you do have to like battle the bosses like a couple of times. I like that about it. You don't have but to that's only so you can throw more sacks at them. You don't have to though. You can just ignore that part altogether. Just keep turning. That's sacks. true. That's true. Yeah, you're right. Yep. But that. Yeah. Okay. You're right. They take. They Basically, definitely take that throwing mechanic, don't they? They run yes. with that. Yeah. They they have just they had a really good idea with the throwing mechanic because it's cool, and then they just went too far. That's my take on it. I feel like they could have. Yeah, just just a wee bit. Just just let's bring it back. Let's yeah. remove the sacks. Do an update. Remove the sacks and let me fight. That's that's what I want to do. I just get in. Yeah. That's or at least make the fighting mandatory. Instead of like a means to more sacks, maybe make the sacks a means. To the fighting. More fighting. That's what Pokemon's yeah. about, after all, isn't it? But I do like how with this new Pokemon game, you kind of feel more like an actual Pokemon trainer. Yes, I agree. It's far more immersive, isn't mm-hmm. it? Yep. 
yeah, for the first time, I feel like I'm actually catching Pokemon. And yeah. I'm training them and I get to decide. One of the coolest things for me being a longtime Pokemon fan is like not having your Pokemon evolve straight away and not having them just learn moves straight away. Like you have to delete this move. Now, if you want this one, you've got to delete one. It's gone forever. You can go into a list of them and like constantly rotate the moves. And That is cool. Which is important to know when you first start out because I was asked this, uh, the, uh, what, the trainer person in the village. I was like, yeah, teach me, teach me this move. And then my Pokemon didn't know it. And I was like, she just, she just took my money and didn't even didn't even give me the move. Which is, Disappointing. What is this crap? I didn't even change. I, I did not even change moves like once up until like an hour ago. And I've oh, almost yeah. finished I've almost finished the game. I just didn't bother. Yeah. Don't fix it. Your cynical broke, still knows tackle. No, quick attack and ember, mate. And he's a type oh, explosion. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So you probably have a typhlosion, man. Now, yeah, he's cool. Yeah. So I, I kind of assumed there because we already had a conversation on another platform about what starter you chose. So the Cyndaquil wasn't it? Well, it had to be because now this is my biggest issue. Mm -hmm. How could they remove the first gen starters? Like, are you? Oh serious? no, I like that. I like that. Nah. There's, there's no Charizard in it. I'm all for it. I want my Charizard. No, nah, uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like we've had this conversation before. And all Dan said the whole time was, oh, "I want Charizard." <laughs> I want it. I like that they had some different ones because we just had the new start, the old starters, and like, let's go. Yeah. So it was nice to. I don't mind that they they weren't the starters, but I would like to be able to catch them, even if it's at the end. Like if you're doing this starting block of, of you know, the, the start of Pokemon, right? That's what it is. It, this game is the timeline. This is the beginning. This is when God created the heavens and the earth and blub and put Pokemon in balls, right? And why yep. are they called Pokemon? Ah, I was waiting for this to come up. Yeah, pocket mm. monsters. If they yeah, haven't makes been no in sense. It's, yeah. You no, messed no, it up. Doesn't. No, no, no. Messed up, dickheads. Yeah, yep. Yep. But, yeah. <laughs> but I think I just think you should have, and I know this is a big ask because of how big the roster is. But if you were going to do that and you're going to make the Pokedex this expansive, instead of making me catch 24 bloody Psyducks, remove some of the Psyducks and put in every single Pokemon. Mm. Okay. Or I... do it eventually. Yeah. Maybe you know there's I mean? going like, to be a post game? No, they're going to stuff it. I want my Charizard. Do you know, my team in Pokemon no, Sword and Shield is three yes. shiny Charizard and three normal ones. That's my team. Yeah. I don't need anything else. Yeah. Yep, I don't know. Only Charizard. Dan is a sucker for nostalgia, which I am as well. I disagree, uh, and I'll tell you why. Because you're wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, 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 I disagree. Dan has turned his back to me now. He doesn't want to borrow this. <laughs> I think this is a perfect opportunity for the Pokemon company to take the assets that they've got because they have like 900 and something Pokemon right now. Um, so I, I understand that having all 900 of those in this game is probably too much. Um, I think it's definitely too much. I think it would be a bit overwhelming. Uh, how many more side quests and Pokedex entries would we have to bloody do if... Yes, but if was, they adjusted you know, the Pokedex entries, it would probably equal out the same. Yeah, but you've got to think of like as the assets and all that stuff. They're trying to make this like yeah. open area game and 
yeah, I just think I I I think three. I think the Pokedex three hundred, and I, I'm happy with a third. I like that they don't have the original starters because they have been riding the wave of. Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Charmander for a long time, and that's it's nice okay. to switch it up a bit. You know, it's, on, if it ain't broke, on. don't fix it. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Games. No, 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 no. Yeah, what's, no, go what's, on. Interject. Interrupt. Yo, yeah, just you're wrong. Um, uh, oh, what's what's wrong. one of the most popular Pokemon there is? Pretty sure it's uh, yellow, and your cat would like to eat it. Um, uh, uh, is it, uh, Togedemaru? Yeah. So, yeah, no, how it's, come, it's Pikachu. How come Pikachu is, uh, the rivals? It's not really a rival, but the rivals yeah, 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 yeah. Pokemon. And how come Eevee? is also present. Do you know um, Ariella Grande? I think she's a singer. She has an Eevee mm. tattooed on her. Oh, really? That's, that's, mm. that, that's information I probably don't care about. Uh, so, no, the <laughs> only reason I know that fan. is because a guy walked into GameStop and he said if, to the guy that was standing there, if you can guess what Pokemon yeah. Ari- 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 Ariana Grande has tattooed on her, I'll buy whatever game that is. And the guy, the yeah. guy got it right. He's like, I don't know, Eevee? And he got it right. He got a game. Uh, yeah. That's the only reason I know oh, is because awesome. I saw that video. So, there you go. Okay, so that's a fun. Yeah, I don't, I don't like any of these actors and famous people are more important. But... I don't think people... <laughs> yeah. But... I just think you can't go down that line of them leaning on Charmander, Squirtle, and Bulbasaur so much, but then they brought in Pikachu and Eevee anyway. So who I arguably think, are the bigger ones. Well, Eevee is a little bit more of a recent thing. Eevee's always been beloved in Japan, but that was really brought to Western audiences with uh, the Let's Go game. Um, and also, I think Eevee has that ability to be new. You know, every every two generations, there is new evolutions, as they're affectionately referred to. Uh, but Pikachu, you were right. I will, I'll give you that one. Uh, he's just the Pokemon mascot. He's never going away. Um, you know, he just he just is and forever will be there. He's on everything. He's on trains and planes and railways is everywhere in japan sidewalks and buildings i think that these new games are the (laughs) perfect opportunity for game freak to take what they've got and do more with it instead of giving us two games and then waiting five seven years however long it is and then remaking those games like they do they just recently did with brilliant diamond and shining pearl Instead of just that cycle and constantly coming up with these, you know, new Pokemon, and then we have like weird ice cream Pokemons, and, and no offense if that's your favorite, I'm sure it's someone's favorite out there, but you know, that's just yeah, you know, that's just impossible. Some of the designs can get a bit lackluster. I think it's a great opportunity for them to really expand in what they've got already. Like there is this huge law that we've been introduced to now. This huge huge story and background and all this jazz. And this is all assets that they've already got. They haven't necessarily introduced us to anything new here, apart from the gameplay loop and obviously changing up the style of game it is. But it's in terms of like region and aesthetics, it's all there. And it always has been. So I think this is a great opportunity. I think the next game might be a Legends Mew or something along those lines. Cool. Which will then give us that Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charmander. But I think it was right of them to not go down the Charizard path now 
and make sure that this game actually works on its own and is able to stand on its own two feet, which it seemingly has done. I mean, there's no sales figures or anything out, but it's kind of everywhere on the internet at the moment. Every person and his dog is playing Pokemon Legends Arcus. And then they'll go down, okay, now we'll do a yeah, Legends Mew, whatever it might be, you know, tells us the history of the Kanto region or the, you know, the, the original ones, what again, whatever it might be. That's that's what I think. That's what I hope at least. Does that make I sense? Want, I want my Charizard. Oh, I love you how are I a big Dan's baby. Like, I want my Charizard. And then I went to the bathroom and then I come back and I put my headphones on and all I hear Dan say is I want my Charizard. Yeah. Again. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Big child. <laughs> Can't Look, for me, aren't not, we all? But... For me, it is a nostalgia thing. And Look, I, I can get over the Charizard thing, like, whatever. I, like I said, I have enjoyed the gameplay. I, there's probably a few aspects that I would change. I, like, I don't know. Why does the flute play the exact same song but summons multiple different Pokemon? That's a valid question. And it's just one big long tube. There's no uh, visible holes. Play no, it like just this. The, yeah. And you just go, do, do, do. and it makes like five or six different notes by going, whoop, whoop, closing your hand on and off at the end. It's it's an interesting choice. These are the big questions. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, excited to see if it does have a post game. A what? A post game. Maybe that's where you'll find your Charizard then. Well, I, I don't, it's actually, I don't think. Yeah, I don't, I'm I don't foresee them doing it. Although they did bring in a whole bunch of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yes. Like they brought them in later. New Pokemon. Oh, yes. Sorry. They did too. Yeah. Yeah. With the, um, with the DLC. Mm. Of of Sword and Shield, that is true. well. That was one of the main things people were upset. people were like going to boycott Pokemon because they weren't fitting all nine hundred and whatever Pokemon's into the Pokedex in Sword and Shield. Um, and that's to me, that's a bit ridiculous. I would rather them again. I'm just reiterating that I would rather them do three hundred right mm-hmm. uh, rather than do like all nine hundred pretty lackluster. Uh, but you know, someone's for everyone. Everyone has a favorite Pokemon and every Pokemon is someone's favorite Pokemon. My least favorite Pokemon is someone's favorite. So you're never going to keep everyone happy. You've just got to make these tough choices. Are they really that tough? Just cut, just, just do a blind test, you know, just, just cut a bunch of them and then, um, and then make a good game. That's, that's all we want, you know? I'm happy Lucario's in there. I'll give him that. There you go. If your favourite's Lucario. See, he's a big, he's an obvious choice. You know, he's quite a, a large Pokemon. Yeah, um, so is Charizard. In terms of like anime stuff. Yeah, so yeah. is Charizard. Yeah, no, no. But yeah. I did look again, I think that the... the I might be saving it for a, another edition of a Legends game. <laughs> I just think the OG starters have been, have been recycled enough, you know? That's all. I'm happy to... To explore new Pokemon, if, if that makes sense. I've played all of the games a lot. And I've already like, oh, yeah, you know, here's this Pokemon I've never bothered to evolve before. And now I'm quite attached to my my little balloon guy, you know? And that's that's cool. Good good on them for being able to take a longtime fan like me and give me something new and give me something I've, I've wanted for a long time, a more involved, action-y orientated Pokemon experience. Mm-hmm. How do you feel it ranks in terms of the Switches library? Laura, we'll start with you. Well, I haven't had the opportunity to play it yet because we didn't buy two copies, but it's one of the few games that we regret not buying two copies of. So that says something, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It definitely does. Yeah. When I say we've been playing, I mean me and Laura's been watching. Mm. So. Dan, what about you then? I guess you have a bit more of an insight then. 
Um, no, look, I I enjoyed it. If I had to tee it up to the whole Switch, I, I think if we're going to tee it up to Switch games, I think it should be the first party Switch games rather than yes, absolutely, just, of course, just any any game on the Switch. I yeah, exclusive. Yeah, I, I think because you know they they just run better um, oh, on the Switch than than most. I think. I, th- I think it's in the top 10, uh, potentially top five. I think mm-hmm. it's good. Don't get me wrong. I know, I know I've bagged on it a bit, and that's because I've had an extensive amount of time to play it. I, I, no, had, the COVID, I had the COVID booster, and I was knocked, yep. knocked out. It cleaned <laughs> me up. So... I was basically, uh, I had like fevers and shivering and shaking and all that sort of stuff and Damn. basically couldn't get out of bed. So, and that was like the day Pokemon came out. So I just played that. It was like, nice. there was nothing Perfect. else I could do. So for me, and you know what, it's probably the second game I've ever had where I've actually brought my Switch with me somewhere. There you go. Wow. That says something too. Absolutely. Yes. Does. And, and one thing being that, like. Yeah. And, and one thing that I really like about it, uh, and I know I've sort of diverted from your question a little bit, but I want to make sure people understand that I actually do enjoy the game, right. is no, the fact please. that instead of having the two titles, we've got the one title mm. that you can do things in game to get around evolution problems because in the previous titles now now sword and shield fixed a lot of that with but that was fixed using pokemon home so pokemon home was a big way to fill out your pokedex and and fix it you know like so pokemon so, uh, I played Shield. I keep saying Sword and Shield, but I played Shield. Shield, I filled out my Pokedex and I relied heavily on Pokemon Home. Which Okay. Is, we relied is, heavy on the random trades. Yes, no, I, like I online just, yeah, tra- Pokemon Home. I want these three Pokemon and it, it, it worked well. Yes, it cost me twenty dollars a year, and yes, I will continue to pay it because it has my shiny Charizards in there, but never let them. Nah, them and my Mew. I'm very attached to Mew. I've got a story about Mew, but Ooh. for me, the fact that you can get the linking cable as an example, because I was watching a um, one of our affiliates, uh, Stack Gemma, on Twitch the other day, and she was playing. And I mean, the cool thing now compared to when I was younger is you can find somebody on the internet, whether that be a streamer, like she was trading with people, which is cool to, to evolve her Pokemon and other bits and pieces. So, you know, things are different to when I was growing up and you had to have the link cable actually. Have to have the cable mm-hmm. plugged into and, and a friend of the game. Yes. I, I had a purple yeah. cable with, dual Ooh. attachments so it could go into the po- wow. co- the Game Boy Pocket or the original Game Boy. I was legit. Yeah, yeah you were the cool kid at school, that's for sure. Yeah, I, just I knew didn't stuff. Have friend, so I never, I never ever evolved my Haunter into a Gengar. See, I, yeah, I had the case, but no friends. We've talked about it before. I had read, finished the game, somebody stole my game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, poor guy. He's still pissed. not over it. <laughs> I'm still pissed. I'm, uh, when I find you, I'm still looking. But mm-hmm. I think I, I think they've done well with that because there are some people that just can't. They just don't have those connections to, mm-hmm. or, or they don't feel comfortable just jumping online and going on Reddit as an example. Reddit's a fantastic source, and going, hey anybody want to do a trade like some people aren't comfortable doing that and there's plenty of good yeah, reasons 
the Pokemon Home really. as an example. I've got three Pokemon that I had to release because they were dodgy Pokemon. Oh, really? There you go. So, That's a shame. Yeah, and I lost good Pokemon because of that. But there's no protection yep. for the user. So you, mm. you've done the trade, you've done the trade. Well, hold on, I didn't agree to a fake Pokemon. Yes, exactly. That's, no, no, that's, that's, that's fortunate. So I, I think this has done better with closing that gap as well, because you don't need to make those as many trades. You, you, I mean, look, it'd be impossible to get a million linking cables. But if you really like Gengar as an example, and that's what you want to evolve as fast as possible, you know, like I really wanted Alakazam. Now I wanted Alakazam because growing up, Alakazam was just hard to get. Yeah, Alakazam yeah, was just yeah. was just that was just the Pokemon. Yeah, 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 super OP, red and blue. Yes, and now it's not. It's pathetic, actually. I got rid of him. Yeah. Changed it for. Quite a, a is it a is it a Philo Swine? Is that what it's called? What's the big one? I changed uh, it for Mammoth. Swine. Yeah. Whatever the mammoth is, I've got him now. Yeah, that's fine. He's cool. I like yeah. him. Yeah, got rid of Alakazam. But, you know, for me, that was cool because I was literally going to trade with Gemma on Twitch. And then there's a point in the game where you can't actually go to the village for a certain period of time. And uh -huh. I was at that point, so I couldn't actually do a trade. But then I found I had a linking cable. No idea when I got it. But I got the linking cable and used that to get to get my Alakazam, which is cool. I mean, I still really want a Gengar, but mm -hmm. it, it's it's just good for people that don't have those connections or can't make those connections for whatever reason. They can still fill out their decks, and I think that's important. Yep. Like, I literally, so heavily relied on Pokemon Home and. Um, What's the other one? Uh, Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Uh, because mm -hmm. you could transfer the Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Home, and then I could push them into then Sword across and Shield. The, yeah. oh. so, yeah, that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, well, I, I filled out my decks twice. So hmm. I filled awesome. it out once, then I moved all the Pokemon over to Pokemon Home, traded somebody my Zamazenta for the Zykeon, and then I played through the mm -hmm. game again. And that way I got a new Zamazenta. And then two weeks ago or whatever, they were giving out shiny wow. Zykeans like bloody. Yeah, there's no tomorrow. Yeah. yeah so I, now, now I've got a shiny Zykean and a Zykean. One point though, is they don't carry the items across in, in Pokemon Home. That's a big oh, thing really? to know. Yeah. So the rusted sword, um, Rusted shield and the whatever the sword is mm -hmm. don't actually go with the Pokemon. So you yeah, always okay. get a Pokemon, you know, with Zykin or Zamazenta as an example, that isn't mm -hmm. what you want necessarily. And yeah. and Pokemon Home also doesn't evolve the Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't trade. The yeah, you can't of... trade to evolve using Pokemon Home. So, you know, it had its limitations, but like I said, I heavily relied on it. I ended up getting three fake Pokemon, four really good uh, legendary Pokemon. Yep. So, um... yeah, so for me, like I said, I have now brought my Switch out of the house because of this game. So to go back to your original mm. question after my tangent is I, I would say for me, it's definitely in my top five. I think it's a really good game. I still have a little bit of an affinity for Sword and Shield. I don't think they deserve the backlash that they got. I think well, in some aspects me they definitely neither. did. I, I, think, I think in some aspects... Like, I, I don't think the roster at the start was as filled out as it should have been. And if they had the intention of filling it out later, 
expectations should have been set and that should have been clearer to, to the user base. You know, like if they said, look, we're going to have 150 Pokemon at the start, in a year, in six months, we're going to release another 150 and then we're going to release another 150 and blah, blah, blah. Cool, easy, no problem. That, pr that provides longevity to a game rather than what yes. Laura was saying earlier about playing a game for six, whatever, months or weeks or blah, 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 not getting to the point of finishing it, changing game, and then not going back to that game for ages. Whereas mm -hmm. Pokemon, Pokemon Shield is probably the first game that I have continued to go back to because you could chuck in a code and get a special Pokemon or the DLC came out or the DLC all of a sudden had Pokemon doing shit in the Pokemon whatever section of the cave. I can't remember what it's called. In the cave. You go in the cave, you get some legendary yeah. Pokemon. Killer. Yep. So for me, those both of those games are up there. I just, I think I like Shield a little bit better right now, only because the additional DLC. If Fair I enough. didn't have yeah, that like additional the package. Yeah, so Shield with the two there, then I would say yes. If Shield didn't have... The DLC was... Sorry. No, go on. I was going to say that the DLC was almost a stepping stone to what we got with Legends Arceus. Um, yeah. In the fact that it was that open area, uh, we had the wild area in Sword and Shield. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So, and then the DLC was more of that. So I feel like that was a, yeah, just like a little stepping stone, a little, little mm. glimpse into the future, if you will. Yeah, and, and yeah. I, I agree. With, without the DLC, that game is not as good at all. What was that? Uh, I was just going to um, ask you how you think it rates the game. What do you mean? Well, we were asking everybody how we think the game rates. In oh, among the Switch of, library? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's the must own. Yeah. yeah. I th thanks for asking. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it's a must own on the Switch, 100%. I don't think it necessarily deserves or should be compared to um, Sword and Shield because they are different games in different styles. Uh, you know, they're, they're both RPGs, but they're, they're definitely very different. Uh, I agree with what Dan was saying. I love, I love Sword and Shield. I think they were, up until this came out, the best Pokemon games uh, that had ever come out. They, were, they, they started doing things a little differently. Again, with the wild area, we got those, you know, those little, the little hints of what was to come again. Mm. Uh, so I think that Sword and Shield are definitely still must-buys on mm -hmm. the system, for sure. I think Arceus is more so, dare I say. I I don't know. I just I don't know if it's because I feel that the Pokemon Company A has given me what I want in a more albeit little little steps, but like a more mature, more open, different game. I love that. Or is it because I think it's a little bit more accessible? So I feel that maybe with the Pokemon games that are coming out now in terms of the mainline series, like, you know, Swords and Shields and, and before that, um, Sun and Moon and that type of stuff. Like, do you have to be a longtime fan to enjoy those as much as we have? Like, again, maybe there's that little bit of nostalgia there with that, that gameplay loop. Uh, I'm. I, I love nostalgia, so and I can't really comment because I'm always going to have that nostalgia. Uh, but yeah, I I think Arceus, it's a must buy on the system. You mm -hmm. you know you should. There's a few games on the Switch that you you'd be stupid not to own. Uh, Mario Kart, I know that's a Wii U title. Uh, Breath of the Wild is also a Wii U title. Get those out of the way. Uh, Mario Odyssey, Super Smash Brothers, Luigi's Mansion. Just to name a few, there's many more. But I think Legends Arceus is 
is in that list. I it, think it's in that list for sure. Yeah, it it deserves all the praise it's gotten. My biggest issue is the graphics. I've seen many articles complaining about the graphics in it. Uh, I think the only bad review is by IGN gave it like a four point nine or something and said that. I think IGN was crap. Oh, were they? Okay, maybe yeah, maybe I'm wrong. The only uh, reason I say that was is because I, yeah, I've saw I've seen a four, uh, but I'm pretty okay. sure I saw an IGN article like twenty minutes, twenty minutes before we started this. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look, there's some some articles out there complaining about the graphics, and I get that. That's probably my biggest gripe as well with assets loading in and out. That weird strip of across the screen that you'll have to go to our YouTube channel to see. But that's not what makes a game for me. And I've seen another more articles saying that what I'm saying, saying that. It's not the graphics that make the game. It's not the assets loading in and out. There's no game-breaking bugs. There's nothing that makes it unplayable. It might not be the prettiest thing you've ever seen in 2022. You know, we have some pretty good-looking stuff, but it's fun. It's a solid gameplay loop. It's fun. What more do you want? It's fun. Get it. Play it. That's why I play games, because they're fun. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, yes, agreed. There's you know more two I, games that we have two copies of, and that's Breath of the Wilds and Animal Crossing. So, the fact that we wanted want two of these, and I kind of really regretted not having my own copy, to be honest, because I obviously, yeah, I don't know, my bad. I was trying to finish games before I started new ones, but uh, digitally downloaded. Mistake. Yeah, digital, digital download. Get it. You can get it right now. Yeah, because it's sold out everywhere. It is. Yeah, that's the other thing. It is. I'm pretty sure it's doing quite well because I. Yeah, I think it's gone. <laughs> I think we, it's gone. Yeah, I think it's sold we out. We don't do any Australian Nintendo games yet. Um, we're working on licensing for that. But I personally cancelled my physical pre-order and decided to go with the digital option only and i know that there's a lot of people that are umming and ahhing about digital ownership and all that sort of stuff Mm -hmm. for me once it hits a certain age how often am i going to go back to it yeah i agree thought and because a lot of people like well i you know do this or i do that okay whatever then you buy the physical copy that's your prerogative Personally, I probably would have already sold it by the time I want to go back to doing it again, if that makes sense. So if if I want to go back to playing that game 10 years later, I don't have that stored for 10 years. I'd have to buy it anyway. That's understandable. Each -hmm. each to their own. I don't think there's any right or wrong answers when it comes to that. It's just personal preference. Yeah, I mean, I I just... for me, I just feel the Switch is a very digital console. So for me, I really like having the digital aspect of it because I like if I'm taking it around with me, I hate changing discs. I hate changing yeah. the cartridges. Like just, you don't want to walk around a separate thing for to keep your cartridges in. No, I totally get that. Yeah. And Indies no. as well. How many of your favorite games don't have physical? Yeah. There's, right? Yeah, most. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely just improves the ease of the portability of the Switch for sure. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So I will download it digitally. I will. There you go. Yay. <laughs> We've decided. Mm-hmm. That is uh, your homework for next week. That's my homework shall we say. Well, I think that probably wraps us, wraps us up here. I think we've been rambling on about the beauty that is brand new Pokemon for long enough now. Yeah, Dan's already looked, left. Yeah, that's, already left. <laughs> yeah I was going to say that. Uh, Dan, Dan's already gone. He's uh, 
I think it's technical difficulties. Yes. Ah. Uh, there we go. He's back now. <laughs> <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah, Zane nailed it. We all have him. But <laughs> it's nothing to be ashamed of, sir. Yeah. So to sum this up, Dan, out of 10? I'd, I'd say out of 10, it deserves a solid eight. I think it's a good game. Like I said, I know I've said a lot of negative stuff about it today. but no, it's, good, it's good contention. I, I like to be critical of a game that I think should be at, at a higher end, if that makes sense. It's not like it's an indie where the developers are getting paid peanuts or... Mm. You know, it's it's the Pokemon company, like, you know. Yeah. I, I think they've done... A a, 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 yeah, I, I still really like the fact that there's only one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's no, not, I think... There's, there's not two. I, I, I cannot handle the the, the two games. I, I just I don't see how it works. See, if there was two games, Laura would probably already own the other one. So mm, that's true. That yeah. is true. That's yeah. why we didn't buy. Yeah. Buy two. Yeah, because we would have we would have had both copies. That's what, which what is, we do. Yeah, that's the fair which rating. Which is fair though. enough for mm. couples that game. Yes, exactly. Couples and siblings, and but that's not yeah. everyone. No, I'm totally with you. I'm totally. I agree. One is one is enough. That is enough. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, Laura. Just yeah. from viewing the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wait, what I've got a question you for you. I've got a question for you before the rating. From because Tom hasn't let you play it and he's made you watch. How mm-hmm. gameplay wise is it confusing to watch? As in, like I wouldn't. I was watching your stream earlier, and Tom mentioned the journal. The requests and missions thing. Mm-hmm. I hadn't done any of the side quests, and I've, I'm a hell of a long way through. I haven't done any of the side quests because it took too long to find that stupid thing. How to bring up the journal? Yeah, you got to press minus. Is that what you were googling last night? Tom had to Google how to do it last night. I had to Google how to change my Pokemon's moods because I just kept pressing plus instead of just clicking on them with A for some stupid reason. That would bring up their, their like, bio, and I was like, oh, this is, yeah. Well, so, watching it, yeah. it's less confusing for me because I don't have to worry about what buttons to push. I'm just watching him push his buttons. But he did hand the remote to me, and I definitely – didn't know how to do a lot of stuff, but I feel like that's good though because like Pokemon has always been so simple, and we all know how to play it because we've played a billion of them, right? Mm-hmm. But now again, this is just like it's something new. It's some it is something it's new, interesting, and for different. that reason, I would rate it eight point eight out of ten. Ooh. It would get a nine out of probably like a nine point five out of ten, but there was that really weird glitch in the town. Again, see our video mm-hmm. to find out what that was all about but yeah pretty high rating what would you rate it i want to give the experience the like so the experience and the story and the gameplay loop and everything i want to give it a 10 10's like can you give anything a 10 though uh, I would say you can Dragon Quest Builders 2, Breath of the Wild, Ocarina of Time. Okay, yes. Uh, yep, Super Mario World. Mm-hmm. Anyways, they're, yeah. they're all like 10 out of 10 games. This is nothing groundbreaking though, so I guess I've got to drop it there. Technical difficulties. Uh, there is a few qualms. Again, too much throwing of sacks See, and balls. Just, just another thing, just to defend the technical difficulties. I haven't yeah. had any other than a Pokemon doing a little bit of a dance. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the asset loading stuff is a little bit weird, yeah. but that's it. Nothing significantly noticeable. So just to put that in there. Nothing's game breaking, that's for sure. I'm, I am yeah. mainly just talking about the assets loading in and out. It is. It can be quite jarring at times and, 
you know, a lot of people have said the world feels empty. I don't think that's, I, I, I guess I can kind of understand where you're coming from. I don't necessarily agree with it, but overall, I'm going to give it, I give it a nine. Nice. I'm going to give it a nine. I think it is my favorite Pokemon game of all time. I think that Pokemon might be my favorite franchise of games of all time. I've actually said that in one of our YouTube videos before. Uh, again, probably just all nostalgia. So it deserves it deserves a pretty high score. I give it a nine. Get nice. it. Basically, if you've made it this far, definitely into get it. The podcast. Yeah, yeah, you should get it. I don't know why you've been listening to us ramble on about it for like Instead way too of long now. Playing Pokemon Arceus. Yeah. Crazy. yeah. <laughs> You should probably play Legends. Arceus. Well, that's all the listeners' homework for this week is exactly. get Pokemon Arceus. Get like Pokemon me. Arceus and play it. We've got the same assignment, so. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> yeah, where can people find you on the internet, on the interwebs? Just hit us up at iDigitalGames.com. Mm-hmm. It is a beautiful website and... Uh, wow, I had the word on the tip of my tongue. Tool? No, it's not a tool, is it? Resource. <laughs> That's the one. Oh, I've been waiting for this to happen on the podcast, but I just can't think of the word. It's oh, first. I've been there. I've yeah. been there. Yeah, yeah. Manipulation. Yeah. That was the word, by the way. There you go. Yeah, if you want to go back and listen to all the podcasts, yeah, it's like episode three or something. It's yeah. so embarrassing. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah, our digital games is a beautiful resource for anyone who's looking to purchase digital games that aren't Nintendo stuff, mm. apparently. But they might come soon. Look out for it. We do have what about US, you? Where can we... US Nintendo. Uh, there oh, you nice. go. Cool. Beautiful. That's nice. I did. I did not know that because I'm not from the US. I, I don't. I don't mind. But yeah, good job. That's awesome, man. Uh, did you ask where people can find me? I did. Uh, you should definitely go check Laura and myself out on YouTube. Uh, just some kind of gaming, S U M, youtube.com forward slash some kind of gaming. You can also find us on Twitter, which is just again, twitter.com forward slash some kind of gaming, S U M kind of gaming. Laura, what about you? Where can people find you? Along well, with me, probably. All of the above that. Tom just mentioned and at Nature Gamer on Instagram. And T U double R. Gamer. No, mm-hmm. no E extra R. It was taken. <laughs> and I've I've looked it up because I was actually considering asking them if we could like trade names. And it's just an account that like it has nothing on it. Nobody's using it. So sad times for me. It is a bit of a shame, isn't it? You can get Instagram uh, to, um, to kill it. Just so you know. Oh, maybe I'll hit them up about that. I feel mm. like I'm in too deep now anyway. <laughs> yes, maybe you do some sign. great stuff on there as well. So if anybody is listening or watching, you should really check out Laura's stuff because it's it's oh, she does thank you. awesome stuff. I love it. Me and uh, me and Jasmine was- were recreating some uh, photos today where we got inspiration from oh, your please. Instagram. So... I would uh, love I'll send to you, see those. I'll send you a photo. We took it Thank on a like, in, Instax camera, so you know the ones that oh. produce the Polaroid thing. So she's got oh, Eevee in a, oh, yeah. in a tree, and then she put Eevee next to the Nintendo and all, all that sort of stuff. So she. Wait, was that yours? My photo. Maybe. Oh. Maybe it was. Dan confusing your Instagram with our Instagram. Oh, there's a possibility. No, he is. We were on hers. She was, we were definitely on Laura's. But, um, okay. oh, my face. yeah, because, yeah, but we just got ideas from that. And then the faces are harder to confuse. <laughs> what do you mean? Yes. No, just she, <laughs> Pretty she made comment. She, no, she, she makes comment on nails. She likes colored nails. So she's, oh, uh, yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah, Laura does a lot of that cool stuff. That's for sure. Oh, well, I yes. can't wait to see those pictures. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a picture later. There was, yeah. <laughs> she just set it up and put the little instax there and blah, blah, blah. So now we had, we had fun. 
So definitely Sorry. check out the this. The new uh, nature gamer on the block. <laughs> N-A-T-U triple R. Oh, there you go. <laughs> competition, Laurie. I like it. I like a bit of healthy competition. Uh, funny. All righty. Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate you listening as always. We have been some low-grade gamers. Thank you for getting this far in our podcast. And make sure you come back next week. Same time next week, same place, same time as always. Like clockwork over here. Thank you, everyone. We'll Love see you next bye. time. Bye. <laughs> Hello and welcome, one and all. We all welcome you to our 11th podcast today. Some low-grade gamers. Now, let me start that again. That was shit. That was shit. Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to our 11th pod. What, did I just say the same thing again? I think I did. (laughs) All right. Third time's the charm. Third time is the charm. This is going in the bloopers, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah let's put it at the end <sighs> hello and welcome everybody St- mm. <laughs> <laughs> just not having a good day